the Utah Jazz have witnessed a season filled with miracle finishes, including one that propelled them to the NBA Finals. In game one, the stage would be set for yet another dramatic conclusion. Early on, Utah controlled the game as the Jazz seemed impervious to the pressure of playing in their first NBA Finals. In fact, it seemed like business as usual for John Stockton and Carl Malone. The defending champion Bulls' response was led by a remarkable performance from Scotty Pippen. Fighting off a painful foot injury, Pippen asserted himself to enable the Bulls to draw even with Utah late in the game. With only seconds remaining, the question became who would seize the role of the hero? The opportunity was there for Carl Malone. But when the MVP saw his chance slip away, it was Michael Jordan who found the game in his hands as time ran out. Another miraculous finish. And tonight, another chapter will be written. Game two is next. The 1997 NBA Finals. Tonight, it's game two. The Utah Jazz versus the Chicago Bulls. The city of Chicago, Illinois, on a beautiful 68-degree spring-like day. It's been 72 hours since Michael Jordan performed the latest in a career filled with heroics and players and fans have waited anxiously for this game two of the best of seven. The usual capacity crowd, better than 21,000 on hand at the United Center, and we welcome you. Just about 8. 15 here in the Midwest and indoors this crowd is ready at the United Center as we check out the starting line the home team has won eight of the last nine games in NBA Finals competition and of course the Bulls have had great success here at home first a look at the lineup for the visitors, the Utah Jazz, Jeff Hornacek, John Stockton hoping to turn things around from the seven turnover performance the other night. Greg Ostertag, very quiet game, along with Byron Russell, only uh, two of nine from the field, and Carl Malone. There's Jerry Sloan, the one-time Chicago Bull head coach of the uh, Utah Jazz. He's done a terrific job as head man of the Jazz. And a look at the defending NBA champion, Chicago Bulls. Ron Hoffer, so important defensively the other night. Look at the second half from Michael Jordan, turning things on in game number one. Luke Longley, Scotty Pippen, who had a sensational all-around game and picked it up in the second half. And, and Dennis Rodman, who Phil Jackson said, like to see a bit more on the aggressive side, although Dennis did not pick up a, uh, a technical foul. Well, we have double coverage on the sideline, as always. Reports from Ahmad Rashad and Jim Gray. Let's start with Ahmad. All right, thanks, Marv. The big story before game one was the condition of Scottie Pippen's injured foot. Well, the big story before game two is also the condition of Scottie Pippen's injured left foot. And just before the game, I asked him how he felt going into tonight's game. Well, I feel pretty much the same. I'm not quite as sore as I was going into game one. Uh, I should be able to tolerate the pain a little bit more, uh, force my speed and quickness out on the court. Uh, I don't know how much better or how much faster uh, I'll be able to push the ball up, but uh, I look forward to trying to push a lot more in game two than I did in game one. Well, well, if he feels that good, you can look for a big night from Scotty Pippen. Let's go down to, and talk to Jim uh, Gray. All right, thank you very much, Jamon. Well, three times this season, the Utah Jazz have lost at the buzzer. The question is, how have they reacted after those losses? And the answer is quite well. Against the Lakers late in uh, April, Shaquille O'Neal hit a shot, and then the very following game, the Phoenix Suns, they lost to them by five points. In fact, they beat them by five points, I should say. Then, after Eddie Johnson hit that shot from around the world, they came back and won game five, and we'll see how they do tonight, but they're a confident team. Mark? I, Jim, of the Jazz controlling the opening tip. The officials, Hugh Evans, Steve Jabby, and Bennett Salvatore. The block by Pippen, who came up hobbling following the rejection. Beautiful back cut by Brian Russell. Couldn't convert. Scotty Pippen continues to own him defensively. Michael Jordan giving the Bulls the 2 nothing lead. Pippen is trying to walk it off. He's defending on Russell. Fires the three. Rodman rebound. 
Well, the Chicago Bulls want to get out and run more, and that's if Scottie Pippen can get the ball and push it up. Right now, he's trying to find out if that left foot is going to work. And Jerry Sloan opening up with a hammer sack on George Francis. George Francis, Hawker finding Pippen. Make it 4 0 Chicago. Talking to Brian Russell, he is well aware that he has to play a lot smarter basketball game. It couldn't have been a worse start for him tonight. Now Malone played by Longley. And the shot affected by Longley. Well, the Bulls feel with Longley on him, it'll force Malone to go outside, which is what he did in game one. And Longley gets inside a holster tag, leading to the quick 20 called by Utah. sequence on the back cut there. Scotty Pippen leaves the ground the first time. Too slow of a delivery and Scotty comes up very, very sore on that foot. But then he just back cuts on Brian Russell. Have no idea how you can allow yourself to be back cut by Scotty Pippen on the game opener. Well, here are the Bulls pushing the ball up the floor and Luke Walley didn't necessarily beat Greg Ostertag down the floor, but beat him to excellent position where he could just work him over. John Stockton, who the Utah Jazz say will be looking for more shots, was not offensive minded the other day, and a foul is called. Dennis Rodman looking for an offensive foul. Foul on Longley, that is his first. And here is the first test at the line for Carl Malone. Well, in an earlier Utah possession, Carl Malone tried to force something inside against Luke Longley. You got to remember, Longley is seven foot two. Carl six foot nine, but uses that broad body so well. More free throw attempts, certainly on the schedule for Jerry Sloan and the Utah Jazz. You see his career attempts coming way, way down. The last four road games for Carl Malone, just four attempts per game in the playoffs. Not enough. Is on his first two. It's six nothing Chicago. We are just underway. Jordan and Russell with the rebound. Well, the double team came, and usually early in the game, Michael will give the ball. It's very important for Chicago to get the supporting cast involved. That means Longley and Harper have to give some offense to the Bulls. Here's Malone. And Hornacek able to save it. Terrific offensive rebound by Brian Russell. Keeping it alive for Hornacek. Steve Javi with the call along the baseline. A hold on Longley. Well, you can see coming out, Carl Malone is thinking about things now. That, that the Utah, over the last couple of days, made a concerted effort. They're going to push the ball inside. They don't want to settle for jump shots. But when you're thinking out there, not just playing your natural game, that's when you get out of sync. Carl Malone's the kind of player has to mix it up. A little bit inside, a little bit outside, because the jumper has been very good to him. Well, guys, Luke Longley plays two minutes and three seconds and picks up two fouls. Well, the first quarter of game one, Utah did get the ball inside, and Carl made a lot of good passes. Cutters on the weak side on Stockton and Hornacek. Early entry for Brian Williams, replacing Luke Longley in a holding foul. It is on Hoffer. A distressing start for Utah. This has been probably the best starting team in the entire NBA all season long. Fall behind early. Oster tag. And a foul. Oster tag set up in good position, could not hit, and uh, took the shot from Brian Williams. In game one, the centers, not the big stars in this series. Neither one of them got to the free throw line. Luke Longley, better on the offensive end. Ostertag, solid on the board. Greg Ostertag in his second year out of Kansas, a number one draft pick last year, had an up and down rookie season. Average about three and a half points per game, was in constant foul trouble. Also had injury problems this 17 games because of a a broken right hand, but made great strides this season. And Marv, his biggest stride has been in his physical conditioning. He has worked relentlessly to, to cut down the body fat, and he's just maturing physically. 
a bright career is certainly on the horizon for him. 6-1, Chicago. Drop and play by Malone. Williams being guarded by Ostertag. Shot clock at one. And it's a 24-second violation. Actually, Brian Williams spotted the shot clock at about five, knew that he had to get something up because he couldn't find a, a pass receiver, but just too many moves, too many dribbles for Brian to get a shot off. Well, Utah has missed its first four shots, and they're one of four at the line. Three minutes have gone by. Illegal defense call for the first time against the Bulls. And it's against Dennis Rodman on the weak side with Greg Ostertag raised up above the tip of the circle on the weak side. Dennis Rodman has to stay above the free throw line, and Dennis sensed the ball going into Malone and drifted into the paint. I think Dennis feels a little left out of this series. I mean, he, he has not had the opportunity to guard Carl Malone. He wants to be the main man. Well, Phil Jackson telling us yes, uh, earlier that he wants more enthusiasm. Traveling violation. The basket will not count. Well, I think in game one, Dennis was vying for the sportsmanship award and the citizenship award. But I don't think anybody in the Chicago Bulls want to see him that passive again. That's not something you can try for. <laughs> it sort of has to just come. Offer with a running pass. It will count. Rodman gets credit on the goal tag. And it's the Bulls eight and the Jazz one. Not one aspect of the Jazz game plan has worked yet. Ryan Williams guarding Carl Malone. Here comes Pippen over to help. And the, the call against the Bulls on a double team. Foul on Williams. That is his second. The Jazz are being successful in drawing fouls, which is outstanding. That will get the Bulls back on their heels. But Jerry Sloan, before the game, talking about how got to take care of the ball second foul now on brian williams take care of that ball run the floor a lot harder and put points on the board 82 will not get it done from game one and what a difference between games one and two in terms of going for the foul line of that opening game of the series on sunday the two teams combined for 17 for 26 at the line the 17 made free throws and the 26 free throw attempts were new final records Viewers made both teams combined. But uh, Utah spending the time at the line here at the start. Not necessarily taking advantage, but they're going to the line. Well, throughout the playoffs, Utah has gone to the line 30 times a game. Their opponents are 32, so they'll give you the opportunity to match them there. Off the steal. Stockton able to handle it. Be nice as the Utah convert these into fast break points. Brian Russell still can't find the range, but fortunately, Carl Malone is a demon on the boards. Utah 0 for 5 here at the start. Stockton with the step, and that is their first field goal. Well, there's a case of Brent uh, Harper expecting a pick and roll, forcing. Uh, John Stockton towards the baseline, and Brian Williams came up with Carl Malone, and that opened up the driving lane. Bulls eight, Jazz five. We are just underway. Off of a wild shot. Good move by Jordan, able to hang to adjust to get the pass to Hopper. That's break opportunity. Convert. Hornacek for three. Rodman lost it, but recovered by Williams. And here's Jordan with the Jazz getting back. Mark, the, the Bulls' interior passing has been very sharp early. Harper and Jordan particularly. Shot clock at seven. Jordan, yes. And that is his second field goal. Bulls lead 10-5. Well, this is the kind of execution that the Bulls got quite a bit of in game one. Just a little pin down for Michael Jordan in the lane. And what Jared Sloan wants his team to be more physical. Just don't let people come to the screen. Make sure you bump that screener so he doesn't get a good shot at the body. Turn around in the 
face of Brian Williams. Carl's starting to feel the rhythm. He, he often misses a couple of easy gimmies early on in the game, but once he finds it, you can't stop him. Pippen. And Oster tag with the rebound. Bulls have a three-point lead halfway through this first quarter. This is much how Scotty Pippen started game one. Not very sure of himself on his feet. He just can't get into the game yet. Here's Jordan. Setting it up for Pippen. Now the running game of Chicago just getting the ball out, advancing it. The players can't catch up to the pass, and a beautiful two-on-one execution. Well, Rodman pumped that outlet pass and drew, drew the Utah defenders up, and then the over-the-top to George. Beautiful back. Oh, uh, Hornacek converting off glass. That is his first field goal, the Bulls 12, and the Jazz 9, and the Jazz settling down after the, the bad start, down 6-0, down 8-1. Utah hoping to tie the series at one. Jordan again. Game three will take place in Salt Lake City on Friday night, 9 o'clock Eastern time here on, on NBC, and then game four on Sunday in Utah, starting at the 7.30 in the East. Hornacek, yes, Jeff Hornacek. Mark, the rhythm is there for everybody on Utah except for Russell and Ostertag. But what the Jazz have to do defensively is make Jordan and Pippen dribble before their shoot. They're catching and shooting. That's too easy. Stopped him. And a foul call against the ball. Timeout is being called with four minutes and 41 seconds to go in the first. The foul called on Rodman. Uh, this is what the Bulls want to do. Get it out and run. Get some easy baskets to Jordan with Pippen filling the lane. And Michael Jordan trying to respond to two straight field goals by Jeff Hornacek. Gets it on the baseline, up in the air, creating space. Much too quick for Jeff Hornacek. A little sudden pick and roll here for John Stockton, and you're going to see Ron Harper try to send it down here, and as Carl Malone comes up to set it, Brian Williams is going to follow him. Big mistake, there's no help for Ron Harper as John Stockton, with a live dribble, just goes right to the rim, and no weak side help. Chicago invariably forces all pick and roll to the baseline. Stockton, he doesn't mind whatever they do. But it'll work against Utah if he ends up on that baseline all the time shooting his own jumper because that just leads to Bulls fast breaks. But the difference between that uh, one, Phil, and a normal Utah pick and roll is many times John Stockton will dribble into it and it's easy to see it coming. That time he got the ball live. Brian Williams as the help defender never recognized him. John Stockton at the line, only 6 of 10 from the field the other night. 12 assists, turned it over seven times on the subject of the uh, uh, pick and rolls check this out but well, utah had the early lead in the first half and held that but then in the second half when chicago battled back utah went to their basics and ran that pick and roll much more frequently was it a question of chicago so successful defending against it or uh, utah just not able uh, to pull it off Utah was just so wide open on all their back cuts, they didn't have to have ever get into the field. Goal. Just seems to be on fire, totally focused in tonight. That's a three for Michael Jordan. He has nine, nine of the 17 Chicago points. 17-13 to score. Jordan to the ball. Stockton certainly going to the hoop. Very conscious about his individual offense. I thought he got bumped that time. Steve Kerr has come on for the first time, replacing Ron Hoffer. Jordan with the fake. Yes. Well, that last three-pointer on the play before, not just an ordinary one, Michael Jordan, absolutely frigid from three, five for 42 coming into this game. In fact, before game one said he wasn't even going to look for it, shooting 12%. Here's Malone getting inside. Will not count. Offensive foul. Foul on Hornacek. The guard screen very physically there. He'll come across. That's not. That's a. That's a terrible call by QL. That's a great screen by the guard. <laughs> Bill, Bill getting, you getting on you early. <laughs> you just can't throw your shoulder into the body of the pan. That's a great call. And a 
an illegal block called on Jason Caffey, who just checked in for Chicago. Little different substitution pattern for Jerry Sloan and the Jazz. Isley coming in with about three and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. Usually he comes in the first stop at your play after six minutes. Looks like Sloan wants to keep Stockton on the floor longer. And Isley played well the other night coming on for Stockton. Here's Russell. Can't find the range. Coming up on three minutes remaining in this first quarter. Jordan putting moves on Hornacek. Now Kerr for three. Yes. Kerr began the playoffs having difficulty locating his shot. As the playoffs have progressed, he has begun to show signs. Or the defense for Chicago is so much sharper tonight than in game one. And Brian Russell, two for 13 in the series. Malone, strong, but no finish. The Bulls up 22-13, and with the ball. Kathy's pass did not connect. Russell has a three on two. Nice finish. Shake it up. He and Pippen came together. Brown wanted an offensive foul on Malone. And it looks like Carl Malone hurt a lot of different parts of the body there, but the one that's giving him that continual problem is that sore right hand. Yeah, he's playing with a, a severe sore burn on the uh, shooting hand that was suffered uh, back on the 20th of May. Bulls lead by seven. Kept alive by Kathy. Trying to do it off the dribble, then <laughs> decided to reset. Good thoughts. Yes, Steve Kerr. Now Kerr is open. Yes. Bulls 25, and the Jazz 15 off the three by Kerr. A minute and a half left in the first. Back in Chicago, it appears that Carl Malone has uh, re-aggravated that uh, injury just a moment ago involved in the, the drive. Puts the move on Scotty Pippen, a, a hard driving move. He lands on the hand, and we mentioned earlier that he has uh, been playing with a severe floor burn on a, sh on a shooting hand that was suffered in uh, game one of the Western Conference Final right here. This was back on the 20th of May, and he just can't seem to shake that injury. And that was an inadvertent trip by Charles Barkley, but so much of Carl Malone's game is going to the floor. Now, I don't think anybody can knock that man down, but he does go down hard, and when he falls, he has to protect himself. So right now, he's not going to be thinking of falling very much with that sore hand. Carl Malone remaining on the floor. It's an 11-2 run by Chicago. For more on Carl Malone's injury, let's check in with Jim Gray. All right, thank you, Mark. Well, they put some new skin to try and cover this open wound before the game. It was broken open on that fall right there. They tried to put some more ointment on it. It is bleeding. There is a problem with it. It's going to be the same condition that he went through probably for the rest of the game because it's very difficult to stop it at this point. Mark? Thank you, Jim. Randy Brown has come on for the first time for Chicago. Called for the foul to put Isley at the line. The Bulls are now over the foul limit. So Howard Isley, a three-year man from Boston College, will uh, shoot two. How about the Bulls? 11 of 16 in this open quarter, including three of three from downtown. Meanwhile, Utah continues to struggle at the line. Marv, this is the Chicago Bulls that we normally see in game three as Jerry Sloan is just trying to, to weather this big push, this great start by Chicago. Offense, once again, the key for Utah. you got to put points on the board and hope that the Bulls eventually cool off or maybe lose interest. Lose interest, huh? Bulls lead 25, 16. Utah during the regular season, pretty good free throw shooting team of 77%. Oh, Caffey lost it. Last touch by the Jazz. Tony Kukoc has come on for the first time. Phil Jackson has Kukoc with Caffey and Pippen along with Kerr and Brown. You can't say enough about the overall play of Howard Isley. Just terrific. Kerr. And 
here comes Eisler. Eisley trying to find Malone, but it was deflected out. Rick Foster, one-time Chicago Bull, has come on for the first time wearing number 44 and matched up with Scotty Pippen. And Malone couldn't find anyone. Has to call a timeout. A waste of a timeout. There. You see a little bit of frustration on Carl Malone's face. Jerry Sloan, livid inside. You got to execute your inbound play. Oh, Phil, I don't think it's a waste of a timeout. You get plenty with the extra timeouts for TV. Possessions in a low-scoring game, much more important. Welcome back to Chicago. ...to stop the bleeding on the open wound of his right shooting palm. He's unable to do so. The problem is with Mike Schmitzky and the trainers, they can't tape that up, Marv, because he then wouldn't be able to hold the ball. And with the sweat and the constant banging, it's going to be an ongoing problem, probably until the offseason. Marv? All right, thanks, Jim. We uh, saw that ongoing problem right throughout the uh, opening game here on Sunday. Shot clock is down to seven. Here's Russell. Oh, he went glass. Very fortunate. I don't know if that was the intent. Ryan Russell has to play great basketball for the Utah Jazz. He reminds me so much of a young Scotty Pippen still trying to play with athleticism rather than skill. He'll get there soon, though. Ryan Russell, fourth year in the NBA out of the Long Beach State, a second-round draft pick. Scotty Pippen. And rebounded by Jeff Borsek. We are down to 15 seconds to go in the quarter. The Bulls lead 25-18. So that timeout by the Jazz not only saved the possession, they got a bucket out of it, albeit a suspect one. Final seconds of the first quarter. Isley. Oh, the runner by Isley. One and six tenths seconds to go. Here's Kukoc with the two-hand set. Good shooting, opening quarter by Chicago. 11 of 19 overall. Michael Jordan led the way with 11. Utah finished with five consecutive points. And it's the Bulls by five after one. You're watching the NBA on NBC. Well, three-point shooting for Chicago has been way off during the playoffs, but they have gotten it going in the first quarter. Michael Jordan only had five all through the playoffs, gets one. Steve Kerr didn't even get a shot in game one, nails two in that first quarter. Third, just 31% in the playoffs, six for 16 in game one, but a good start here tonight. Utah listening to their coach, Jerry Sloan. He wanted him to get to the foul line more. They took 10 free throws in the first quarter, 11 total for in game one, only two turnovers. They're just down five. They can start shooting the ball. They'll be right there. And you can see the, the uplifting play, three-point range by Chicago. Second quarter is underway. Michael Jordan is back. Brandon Anderson, the uh, rookie from Georgia, has checked in for the first time. Chris Morris on the floor for the first time. And here's Malone over to Caffey. Caffey played him well. A little bit of a force there by Carl. Got caught with the wrong footwork. But an interesting way they set it up with the nice screen by Chris Morris. Longley's back. He had picked up the two early fouls. Here's Longley. Lost it. And recovered by Malone. Stockton back very quick in this game, even though Isley was playing perfect basketball. Utah scoring the final five points on that first quarter. Here's Malone going to the running hook. Uh, Utah's going to need a lift from Chris Morris with Brian Russell's game way off and Kukos guarding Morris. they got to look for some shots for Chris. Marmolo now two of seven from the field. Happy popped it up. 
terrific recovery defense by the Jazz. An underrated defensive team. Underrated? I think they're one of the best defensive teams in the league. Low field goal percentage for opponents. Play basic, solid defense and a good defensive rebounding team. Phil is referring to his own rotisserie league. But, but unlike the Chicago Bulls, they don't have one guy who you would say, now that's a great defensive player who can just shut down the other team the way the Bulls have Jordan, Pippen, and Rodman. Well, no, no, of course, they don't have those three guys. Carl Malone, however, first team all defensive. Stockton, a skills leader, although he has problems with individual defense. Oh, Stockton is looking to beat the 24. Here's Jordan. By Camping. Nice passing. Long lane. And a loose ball foul. It is on Caffey. That is his second. Two minutes gone by in the second quarter. Neither club has scored. Here in the second, Ryan Williams checking back in, replacing Jason Caffey. Marv in game one. The Jazz controlled the board throughout the game. Early on here, Chicago back to their customary position of 15 to 10 on the glass. Get Antoine Carr off here for the Utah Jazz. He needs a jumper. And Carr tripped up. Foul on Williams. That's three on Brian Williams. It leads to a timeout. Well, these aerial views of Chicago being brought to you by Goodyear. Marv Albert, Matt Dugas, Bill Walton, Mark Rashad, Jim Gray, 9.53 to go in the first half. And the Bulls lead the Jazz 25-20. Uh, for Carl Malone, the best way to exercise the negativism from the end of game one is to come out with a huge offensive game. It has not been the case. Everything has been short, the front of the rim. And after every time something doesn't go down for him, he looks at that right hand and that big gaping wound as big as the Grand Canyon right now as Carl takes his regular breather. Jerry Sloan telling us that he, he substitutes much more by the clock than he does by how the flow of the game goes. And the Bulls have cooled off. They started out 11-16. They missed their last six shots. Foster with the uh, drive and a foul before the shot attempt. Foul on Chaffee. That is his third. Poor shooting for everybody with the exception of Hornacek. Hornacek got those nice looks on Michael early on, but Stockton, Russell in particular, and Carl Malone. Here's Carr. Yes. Antoine Carr brings the Jazz within three. How about the uh, the personal foul call? Chicago has been hit with 11. Utah, only one. It was an offensive foul. That's it. Well, in that first quarter, the Utah players weren't close enough to even get up on a shooter. And you can hear the reaction as finally there is a, a personal foul call against the Jazz that puts Kukoc on the line. It's, it's on Morris. Well, throughout the uh, NBA Finals, our own NBA on NBC analyst, Steve Cyber Snapper Jones, will be analyzing the games live online on NBCSports.com. Steve, answering any questions that you might have about the game or the series while providing pre- and post-game analysis. Plus, after the game, you can listen in to the post-game press conferences online. It's all right here on NBCSports.com. I'm going to disagree with you, Matt, on the fouling situation for the Utah Jazz. This is a, a non-fouling team in general. They play great position defense. They don't gamble. This is not a dirty and, and, and illegal team. And they haven't fouled. Great pass. And Carr, wide open, takes advantage. Antoine Carr, a 13-year veteran out of Wichita State, a guy who's made the round provides toughness off the bench that's his second field goal three point chicago lead here's Kerr for three and the ball back to the jazz shandon anderson mark quick down on the double team and able to rotate back i don't know if they move the three-point line out as they're talking for next year if the guards will be able to do that double down and still rotate out 
Well, the good thing about it is that teams will play different kinds of basketball. It'll open up more driving lanes, more middle distance shooting instead of just the inside and just the threes. Michael Jordan was asked about the uh, the change of the, the distance. He said the way he's been shooting is three. It doesn't matter. Judd Bushka has just uh, checked in, able to handle uh, the box out. Here's Rodman. Met by Carr. Chicago's got nearly five minutes without a field goal. They've missed their last seven shots. Two coach. Make it eight straight misses. Anderson with the rebound. For Utah's bench, this is something that's happened throughout the playoffs. Oh, oh the pass. Stopped him finding Anderson, but it could not convert. Stockton is back for George. Curve for three. They cannot buy one. To, to Bulls unable to take advantage of the situation where Utah not shooting the ball well. Carl Malone got off to a poor start in this game. Yet, Utah right in it. Chicago over its last nine. Carr putting moves on Rodman. Not really Antoine's shot, the step under, looking for the foul, barking at Salvatore. And now Chris Morris defending on uh, Michael Jordan. Foul is called against the Jazz, a hold. Don Foster, that's his first. And for Utah, their second team foul. Michael looking longingly over at Phil Jackson for a little direction here, trying to figure out what they can run to get scored. But just let him shoot, do whatever he wants. And he was fouled. Nice pass from Kukoc to set up the reverse for Rodman. Foul committed by Carr. Well, what the Bulls have done on this particular play is spread the floor a little bit. The triangle hasn't been working. And by doing that, you open up the lane. Nice feed by Tony Kukos. And right after that pass, Michael Short went over to Tony and got into his ear a little bit, saying, come on, you got to pick it up a little bit. you got to make some things happen. Not so much shooting from the perimeter, but put the ball on the floor and create. Scotty Pippen <laughs> returning for Tony Kukoc. How about this, guys? We played about five minutes. And thus far, the second quarter, Utah with four points. And Chicago with four. But the beauty of both these teams, we saw it on that last play, is that there's so much movement without the ball. There's guys not just standing around watching others play with it. Antoine Carr delivers. Oh, make a shot. One time, please. Bulls have missed their last nine shots. Six and a half minutes without a field goal. Yet they lead 29 to 24. Now Jordan putting moves on Anderson. Yes. Well, that ends the streak. Well, that's the offense that Phil Jackson was telling Michael to run. Chicago leads by seven. You hear the chant of defense. Well, small Chicago team out there right now. Utah should be taking it to the rim because there's just no shot blocking out there unless the Jordan or Pippen come over. Whoa! Morris from way downtown. Like I said, take the ball to the rim or shoot from 30 feet. We did discuss in the pregame meeting how Chris Morris this would be his breakout game. Chris Morris from beyond area code range. Michael Jordan going one-on-one. -on -one. The Jazz will live with this. You make him put it on the floor two or three times, he is going to score. And then Chris Morris comes off a pick looking to just keep the continuity going. He said, hey, I've been on the bench so long, I'm putting one up no matter what. We have five minutes and 57 seconds to go in the second quarter. The Bulls lead by four. Welcome back to Chicago. I'm Jim Gray. I'm now joined by the owner of the Utah Jazz, Larry Miller. Larry, a very unique situation. Because of your religious beliefs, you missed the game on Sunday because it's a day of rest and a day for your family. How difficult was it for you to miss that game, and how did you find out about the final score? Well, uh, it was very difficult. Uh, I found out about the final score because I listened to the radio the last couple of minutes of the game. Uh, if it goes seven games, I wind up missing three of them. 
three of them are on Sunday. <laughs> so a lifetime dream, and then you're going to miss almost half the games. Does it tug at you? Do you want to be there? Well, to be honest with you, I'd like to. But, yeah, I think you got to decide who and what you are and stick with it. So that's what we've chosen to do. Larry, how'd you get this good of a seat? You're in your same front row position. Well, just before game time, uh, the Bulls owner, Jerry Reinsdorf, ran sitting next to me, had an extra seat. He said, hey, give it to Larry Miller and put him up there. So here I am. Enjoy the game, Larry. Thanks, Jim. All right, Mark. All right, thank you, Jim. The Chicago Bulls went seven minutes and two seconds between field goals. They had missed nine in a row before Michael Jordan was able to convert. The Bulls now lead 31-27. We have five and a half to go in this first half. Carl Malone has struggled here in the first half, just two of seven from the field. Six points, two rebounds, foul committed by Judd Bushler. Mark, you talked about the offensive struggles for the Bulls. They started off the game 10 for 14. Since then, after nine minutes, Mark, two for 12, but their rebound dominance has kept them in the lead, albeit very slightly at this time as Carl Malone gets in great deep position. And it brings Utah with him to Chicago has led from the start. They were up 6-0. They were up 8-1. to one. Very low scoring second quarter. Utah with a 9-6 edge to this point. And we have just under five minutes to go in the second. Rodman, who the last couple of games was looking for his shot, has not been looking here tonight. He's been giving up the ball. Jordan able to save it. What a great rebound by Michael Jordan. Knew exactly where that ball was going the whole way. Hopper cut off by Stockton. And trying to go glass. Rebound Jordan. Well, both teams very small right now. You shouldn't even be thinking about settling for jump shots. Try to get the ball in the basket or do what Michael just did. Get to the offensive glass. And Jordan with 15 points. Eight rebounds, four assists. Bulls have a four-point advantage. Now Rodman defending against Malone, who lost the dribble. Hopper over to score, and it's knocked out of bounds by Malone. Oh, terrific defensive help by Ron Harper as Rodman, in all kinds of difficulty, slopped on the play, bailed out, but Rodman came down to, to help him out. Bill, several of the Utah players have been saying they're not accustomed to the long arms reaching in on the part of the Bulls, talking about Hopper and Pippen and Jordan. They uh, they rarely see that. Chris Morris knocked it out of bounds right there. Marv, that was a great move from the early championship years with B.J. Armstrong when he was the guard. When, when Orlando went with their big guard, Nick Anderson and Penny Hardaway, they got rid of all the little guys and brought in the, the Rodmans and uh, and the Harpers and the, and the Ku coaches because those are the guys that can create those passing lane difficulties for the opponents. 22nd timeout has been called with 3.53 to go in this first half. Carl Malone working so hard without the ball to get open and keep Rodman on his back. This time he delivers, keeps both hands on the ball, and then looks right down at that hand. Then lost the dribble. Carl not as sharp as you would expect him to be in this game with the ball handling, with the little short shots to the ground again. And every time he hits that ground, that hand just gets a little bit more opened up. The shot chart for Carl. Everything inside. Now he has become, I think, the best big man junk shooter in the game, along with Patrick Ewing from the Knicks, but uh, not there tonight. Pippen. And for Scotty Pippen. Two of five from the field. And that's the uh, early offense for Utah where Malone runs the floor, tries to get that position in the paint. Good transition defense that time by Chicago to get back and cut it off. Adam Keith has come on for the first time. Malone rejected, recovered by Anderson, and it's 24, second violation. Tough break for the Jazz, but it's, they're not playing well. Jerry Sloan coming back with some of his regulars here, but they're only down four points. Once they hit some sort of rhythm, they have a great opportunity to take over this game. Yes, one a second. Russell getting sent to a check back in. It's Harper for three. Ron Harper with his first field goal. Bulls lead, 36. 29. It seems like Ron Harper gets a three a game here on this floor. He usually saves it, however, for the fourth quarter. Mars, a 
played by Bushler. Now Longley on Malone. Oh, Malone squaring up. He's been off. Bushler rebound. Short every time for call. I think it's in his footwork. Oh, he's short. And he threw the foul. I know short, but that beautiful change of pace. Able to accelerate, jump the step. He'll go to the line. When we come back, you're watching the NBA on NBC. Reminder coming up at halftime, the Prudential Halftime Report. We'll be hearing from the new coach of the Orlando Magic, Chuck Daly, who will be on the NBA Showtime set with Hannah Storm, Peter Vesey. We'll also get first-half analysis from uh, the Dr. Julius Irving and the czar, Mike Fratello. That's all coming up on the Prudential Halftime Report. Carl Malone, the man who's got to get it done. The numbers haven't been there. Receives the great screen. But then, so many dribbles allows three, four, four balls right in there. Scotty Pippen gets his second block on the night. And you look at a statistical analysis for Carl. First and third quarters, very strong. Second and fourth, not there. And the questions keep jumping up in Chicago about the delivery of the mail. In fact, Scotty Pippen went over to Carl Malone prior to his attempting those critical free throws the other night and whispered uh, to Malone, you know, the mailman does not deliver on Sunday. I think Carl Malone has to start mixing it up. Oh, here's some good foot court pressure by Chicago. Forcing the turnover. Caught him off guard. I don't think anybody was ready for that. Way too close to the baseline. Four horn a sec. Inbound to the foul line for a big man against the press. So the Bulls get it back. Two and a half to go in this first half. Chicago leads eight. Pippen being played by Russell. One sec on Jordan. Longley for Hoffer. Beautiful ball movement. Uh, Michael Jordan getting in the air, thinking shot, but able to stay up there so long, make the adjustment, and a terrific look by Luke Longley to find the open man. So the Bulls now lead 39, 29, delay a game call. That's the warning on the ball. Ron Harper wanting a foul call as he slid down the lane. Jazz need to get some go offense going here. Collapsing ball defense has been too tough. This is the biggest lead of the night for Chicago. Some clock at five. Four sec. Ran it to a crowd. Malone could not put it back. And a foul. Foul committed by Anna Keith. Well, Carl Malone is not going to ever get a better look than that point blank range. It, obviously, the hand has to be part of it. Carl does not want to use that as an excuse, but he's thinking about the hand, having trouble handling the ball. But he is right there in perfect offensive rebounding position, and it just squeezed it out. I think Carl's got to mix up his game a little bit, too. He continues to just run to that left block. He's also an effective player up at that right of the key area where he can shoot or drive. Well, Utah now over the foul limits of Tony Kukoc at the line. Remember, Friday night, the scene will shift to Salt Lake City, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. That'll be game three of the NBA Finals. Michael Jordan in the Bulls going up against Carl Malone. John Stockton of the Utah Jazz. Malone and company unbeaten on their home floor since back in February. That's game three, Friday night, 9 o'clock Eastern, 6 in the West, right here on NBC. Bulls trying to go up to zip. Utah hoping to tie the series in one. John Stockton getting some pressure from, from Hopper. Chicago in the midst of a 10-0 run. We have a minute and 40 left in this first half and some aggressive play on that buck between Hopper and Stockton. Well, both teams, I'm sure, with two days to think about it, realize that they want to be more physical within the rules, but Harper really starting to lay some lumber on Stockton. Jordan putting the moves on. The look away. Twelve unanswered by Chicago. And Ron Harper great. 
bringing the crowd to its feet. Chicago defense stifling. Need leadership and poise for Utah right now. They go to their MVP. Well, this is Chicago Bull basketball. Flurries on defense, creating turnovers, getting the steal, and they quickly converting at the other end as Jordan breaks through the defense and spotted for Scotty Pippen way before that, but delivered it right on time for Scotty to finish with an explosive dunk on that short foot. Now on Pippen had put the balls over the limit, and here's Tom Malone, two of four at the line. Marv, it's all falling apart for the Jazz right now. They've fallen behind by 14. Try to get some sort of rhythm here for Jerry Sloan and his Jazz. Get out of here with something going in your favor and then come out and start over in the second half. And Chicago has outscored Utah 18-10 in the second quarter where you uh, Approaching a minute left in the hand. The Bulls lead 43 30. Jordan through the foul. And again, another outstanding adjustment by Michael Jordan. Driving to the lane, really was thinking pass out to Tony Kukoc. But as soon as he hears the whistle, make sure he got the ball up towards the basket. Really wouldn't matter because both teams in foul. <laughs> it's a foul problem. But that's just, just how alert and aware he is to make that adjustment. And Michael is hearing the MVP from the Chicago crowd. There, though, is this year's MVP who has not had a strong game. The Utah Jazz in trouble when they're back on their heels and Michael's got his tongue hanging down there on the bottom of his chin. What a recovery by the Bulls. They went better than seven minutes without a field goal. They missed nine straight shots, but they reach after their stride and lead by 15. As Hornacek made the move, Foul is called. Foul on Pippen. That is uh, his uh, second on the subject of the most valuable player uh, voting. Carl Malone edging out Michael Jordan, followed by Grant Hill and Jim Hardaway and Glenn Rice. One of the closest votes in history. The other one being the time that uh, Charles Barkley and Michael and Magic Johnson got it. No, no, it was a long year there. Excuse me. We'll, we'll uh, edit that out of the telecast then. Utah now 7 of 13 at the line. That was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> A self-inflicted blow by, uh, by Bill Walton. Don't let it get me. Just under a minute to go in the first half. And the Bulls now lead by 14. They isolate Jordan against Hornacek. And Ben Salvatore, the outside official, indicating a pushing foul on Utah. It is on Hornacek, his second. Once again, the percentage is Michael Jordan so aware. Michael tends to sometimes settle for the jump shot because defenders will back off him, give him the room. He can just go up and shoot very comfortably. But with the Jazz in foul trouble, take it to the basket, draw the foul, get some freebies at the line. And Jordan is four for five from the line. He has had a magnificent first half, 19 points. Eight rebounds and five assists just continuing along with the, what has been a sensational career in terms of NBA final play. And the amazing thing about these finals, like last year against Seattle, Michael is not really shooting the ball that well. He's had some streaks, but he's not satisfied with the shooting. You guys agree, though, this is about the best we have seen the Bulls play during the playoffs in all aspects. Uh, not just their offense, but their passing is terrific. Their defense has been suffocating. The Jazz can't get anything on, and they've brought the crowd to their feet to close it out here. A rousing standing ovation for the Bulls. Final seconds of the half. Chicago by 16. Short putting moves on, and then had it knocked away. Last touched by the Jazz, and you know that he wanted to end the half uh, with an emphatic move. Bill Jackson coming with offense here. Kerr and Pippen for Harper and Rodman. We're down to two and nine.
10 seconds remaining in this first half. Chicago has outscored Utah 22-11. Here in the second quarter, the Jazz with uh, without a field goal the last five minutes and 17 seconds. Well, the Bulls wanted it for a side out of bounds play, but the ball did not go over the rim, ruled by the official, so it's obviously underneath. And Kukos will throw in. Finds Jordan, who fires. That's the end of the first half. Mastery by the Chicago Bulls. They lead the Jazz 47 to 31. Jordan with 20, Malone with just nine, will be joining Hannah Storm for the Prudential Halftime Report right after these messages. This is the Prudential Halftime Report, brought to you by Prudential, bringing strength and stability to America's families through insurance, health care, real estate, and financial services. Time of game two in Chicago with the Bulls leading the Jazz 47 to 31. Michael Jordan leading all scores with 20 and all rebounders with eight. And Pearl Malone with the injury to his shooting hand suffering through a bad first half this three of 12 from the field for nine points. Welcome back, everybody. Hannah Storm and Peter Bessie, and we are joined by the new head coach of the Orlando Magic, Chuck Daly. Congratulations, Chuck. Thank you very much. Okay, now we're going to keep in the broadcasting mode for just a moment here and have you comment on the on the first half. Well, the first half is a, about the problems that you have with the Chicago Bulls, and that's basically you can't score against them. They take all of your scoring away, and we see it on the board. Now, why did you want to leave this glamorous job of broadcasting <laughs> and get back into coaching in a job that you actually turned down a couple of weeks ago? Well, I, I found out what hard labor that you people suffer through here, so I decided to go back to more of an easy life. <laughs> <laughs> what made you change your mind about the job? Well, it's kind of interesting. I, I had been intrigued by it over the last year, uh, maybe suffering through watching teams play. Uh, I've always been in love with the game. Uh, I like to teach the game. I think the game is going to change because I think we're going to have rule changes. And so consequently, uh, this came about. Originally, I said no. And then all of a sudden, when I hung up the phone, I said, I think I made a mistake. I'm intrigued by this job. I like this team. I like this area. I revisited, and it happened. Chuck, you said that when you were out of retirement that you were only going to come back for crazy money. Now, I assume $5 million a year is crazy money. But you also said that you only wanted to come back to coach a championship contender. Well, there are not a lot of those around, quite frankly. There's one out here, and this club has been there a long time. But uh, I think uh, times are going to change at some point. I think we're going to get into the recruiting wars very soon in another year. I think certain teams are going to have more advantage than others. Look at Miami, Orlando, Phoenix, L.A., and New York. And we've got this first class coming out. I think some exciting things can happen over the next two or three years. Doesn't it bother you to come back and coach a team that sabotage the coach, Brian Hill? I mean, that could easily happen to you, although uh, Chuck Daly and the Orlando Mutineers has a kind of nice ring to <laughs> you know, Peter, I think most coaches are probably one step away from that happening during the course of a year or over the course of their season. Everybody today who owns a team wants to win, and it isn't going to happen for everybody. The teams that win are not going to have a problem. It's the teams that, you know, I, I tell it this way. We've got 29 teams, CEO, CEO money. We're going to change 15 of those. You took 29 companies, that wouldn't happen. But you've got to win in this business or they're going to change the head. And it sometimes it comes sooner or later. Now, did you talk to any of the players before you took the job? No, I really haven't talked to them. I did see Horace Grant yesterday in the building. He happened to come out of the room. I got down on my knee and said, let's play. You know, <laughs> please play, because that's what it's all about. You've got, you know, I understand the game. It's about players. It's not about the coaches, although we've gotten some very glamorous coaches. Really. Larry Bird, Rick Pitino are unbelievably glamour people in terms of the coaching profession. Penny Hardaway lobbied hard for you. Now his contract is up in two years. You have a three-year deal. Is that extra year an inducement to get Penny Hardaway to resign? Well, you could you could say that, but who knows what's going to happen in those two years? I'm you know I might make too strong a demands on Penny Hardaway. I saw what he was he made a serious mistake in the last two games. Any guy can go out and get 40 against a Riley coach team. Then you've got to kind of expect that every night. What are your realistic expectations for this team? They lost in the first round of the playoffs. This well, week. I went down there with Brendan Sewer, and we we're on a plane, and he said, "Well, I get it." 
I get up at 4 o'clock now. I can't sleep, and I don't think we're ever going to win a game. So the Prince of Pessimism is back. But I, I think this is a club. I think this is a club that uh, has some interesting parts to it. And I think, you know, a lot of selling to be done. Got to get tougher physically, work defensively, and see where it goes. The Prince of Pessimism, and we are glad to That's have you back. That's a Bob Ryan that. job. <laughs> Big Daddy Rich. <laughs> okay, congratulations again, Chuck. Thanks Thank you. for joining us. And when we return, we'll bring in Julia Serving and the head coach of the Cleveland Cavaliers, Mike Fratello, to analyze the first half between the Jazz and the Bulls. But first, a message from Prudential and a word from the NBA. <laughs> Time in Chicago. The Bulls are leading the Jazz 47 to 31 in Game Two. Now let's talk about the first half with Dr. J and Mike Fratello. Doc, Carl Malone said coming into the game, the one thing he wanted to do is score more inside. Can you assess his performance in the first half? Well, he's not scoring a, a, a lot of points here, and uh, the Bulls have been playing here with various people. They've been playing defense on Carl Malone, somewhat by committee, and he's getting these multiple looks on defense. Early it was Luke Longley and uh, Luke forced him outside. Uh, then Brian Williams comes in and uh, forces him to uh, shoot the jumper, turning a great, great player into a fallaway jump shooter. It's very necessary for the Jazz, not only Carl Malone, to try and get some stuff in transition. And Carl was able to do a little bit of that. If we see too much of that, you know Rodman's the answer. He's seen Jason Caffey play him. He's seen Dennis Rodman play him. I think if Carl Malone really gets off and going, those are the two guys who will give us that power forward matchup that we've been craving in this series but so far he's been in check by four different people and he only has nine points and maybe hurt somewhat also by the uh, injured area on his shooting hand now mike utah committed to single coverage on michael jordan burned him at the end of game one but they said they were going to stick with that game plan here today hey he's on his way to a triple double how'd that force him to change things well sometimes there's a residual effect from the last game when you get beat on the last shot uh, and you were remembering this, you go into the next game and you say, okay, let's be prepared to make some changes if we have to. But when you have a halftime stat sheet that says 20 points, eight rebounds and five assists, he's doing it every way. Turnaround jump shots, in the open floor, breaking the defense down, looking to take it to the basket for scores or free throw opportunities. And then last but not least, this is the consummate team player. After starting at the game and making five out of his first seven shots, Jordan starts in the elbow area and is going to try and free himself up to catch the entry pass. On the opposite side of the floor, Howard Isley has said, hey, look, that's enough. I'm going over here and randomly double-team Michael Jordan and try to get the basketball out of his hands. The problem is Jordan, being the unselfish player that he is, sees Isley on the way for the double-team. Rodman reads the situation, dives in the middle of the lane to take his player, and now Steve Kerr just goes to the open area on the floor and just kind of hangs out knowing that Michael Jordan is going to make a move, find the open guy, and there are none more unselfish than Michael Jordan, the ultimate team player. He beats you with the score, he beats you with the pass, and he rebounds as well. Wow, the 31 points for Utah, that ties the second lowest first half scoring in finals history. Chicago's defense doing a great job. And Mike, we got a note on one of your guys. We got to acknowledge him on Monday, the NBA naming Terrell Brandon of the Cleveland Cavaliers, the winner of the 1996-97 NBA Sportsmanship Award, designed to honor the player who best represents the ideals of sportsmanship on the court. Brandon received the award from NBA Commissioner David Stern and will donate $25,000 to his former school in Portland, Grant High School. It's halftime in Chicago. Back for the second half right after this. This has been the Prudential Halftime Report, brought to you by Prudential. Bringing strength and stability to America's families through insurance, health care, real estate, and financial services. Back in Chicago, Marv Albert, along with Bill Walton and Matt Gukas, a 16-point lead for the for the Bulls over the Jazz in this game, two of the best of seven NBA final series. And uh, the Chicago Bulls just dismantled the Utah Jazz in the second quarter. They uh, outscored them 22 to 11. Let's check out the uh, middle light uh, halftime statistics. Uh, first of all, the scoring rundown for the Chicago Bulls, who shot just under 46%. 12 of 27 from two-point range. Well, so much of their offense was generated by their defense. Got out in Ramor. Didn't get a lot of fast-break points, but Michael Jordan 
starting to find his touch, and that is bad news for Utah. And Michael Jordan overall, 20 points on 7 out of 14. A look at the uh, the Jazz rundown. The offense just non-existent there, Mar. They couldn't shoot a lick, 31%, resulting in basically no assist for a very good passing team. Carl Malone struggled mightily. He's the guy who's got to get it done. No perimeter shots really went down for him. Lots of easy misses. The shots have been there for the Jazz. They just haven't been able to knock them down including from the free throw line, Marv. Not Over, a good sign for you. Overall, Bill Malone in his 20 minutes, 3 of 12 from the field. We'll be back in a moment. Ahmad Rashad back in Chicago. Phil Jackson told his team at halftime to stay aggressive. He really, especially on the defensive end, felt like their aggressive defense was really taking Utah apart. Now, I talked to Scotty Pittman as he was coming out, and he said, now, I asked him how he felt. He said, well, I feel kind of like Willis Reed felt when he came out for Game 7 back in 1970. Let's go down to Jim Gray. All right, thank you very much, Ahmad. Well, Jerry Sloan is not feeling good at all. He told his team at halftime, hey, guys, you're being outworked, you're being out-hustled, and you are failing to compete. Go out there, take a hard foul. Make something happen. Very unhappy with the shot selection. They shot only 31% in the half. Spoke to Carl Malone. He says he wants the ball to keep coming down to him. His hand is bothering him, Mark, but he won't make any excuses, he said. All right, thanks, Jim. Only one team... NBA history, the 1948 Baltimore Bullets have ever come back from more than 15 points down at halftime to win a finals game. The Bulls have a 16-point advantage on the Jazz as this third quarter gets underway. And that's the kind of aggressiveness Jerry Sloan is looking for. Brian Russell knocking the ball loose and getting on the floor. Again. Brian Russell will continue to struggle on the ball facets of the game really relying far too much on his athleticism rather than just on, on good, smart basketball plays. And the foul called on Greg Ostertag. That is his first. Phil Jackson opening up with Ron Offer, Michael Jordan at the guard, Scotty Pippen, Dennis Rodman, and Luke Longley up front. Offer played by Stockton. Offer got the step. Rodman passed on the shot, and now a two-hander. Dennis showing the entire repertoire. A minute gone by in the third quarter. Rodman applauding that call. It is against Utah. Foul on Ostertag again. And he nailed Michael Jordan running along that baseline as uh, definitely the Utah Jazz have come back with a much more aggressive nature. And a technical has been called. A technical foul on Ostertag. Uh, early offense for the Utah Jazz running the baseline and Michael Jordan not really expecting that shoulder and hip move by Ostertag got nailed. And that's the uh, first technical handed out tonight. Michael Jordan not able to take advantage. In game one on Sunday, of all people, 74-year-old assistant coach Tex Winter was hit with a, uh, a technical foul. He complained in very low-key fashion. You wonder, is he the oldest man ever to be hit with a technical in a NBA Finals game? He part of that for a while. Foul. A lot of whistles here at the start of the third. Oh, well, what Tex Winter was complaining about was the hard, illegal screens by the Jazz getting up into the man where the man couldn't move, and he kept complaining and complaining about it, and then he finally said the magic words to the referee. Check the rule book. Those were the magic <laughs> words. Tex, the master of the, uh, the triangle. Greg Ostertag has committed three fouls within 79 seconds. Truth always a defense to libel. Yes. And Ron Hopper at the line for the first time. Only 11 points scored by the Jazz in the second quarter. That equals an NBA Finals record. Fewest points in a quarter. Chicago with 11 last year in the finals against the Seattle Sonics. Mark can't stand up about the defense of Ron Harper on John Stock. Stood up tall over the top of him. Forced him into very difficult passing angles. Stock just has not had good looks. And this particular play here, Jeff Hornacek 
can put the ball on the floor and get into the lane. Ron Harper checking on the pick and roll here. Normally wants to send that baseline, but Stockton able to get over the top. And then Hornacek getting into the lane. And he is a tough shot taker and maker. And Dennis Rodman just bent over as he is wont to do. Second call on Rodman. And Hornacek with only his sixth point. Now Jeff Hornacek, a nice compliment to Stockton Malone, able to shoot the perimeter shot, an excellent three-point shooter and free thrower, and picking it up in the playoffs. The Bulls now lead 49 to 33. Chicago Bulls trying to make it five NBA championships in the last seven years. Utah to the NBA Finals for the very first time. Hoffer, yes. Ron Hoffer has been a very important player these first two games of the final series. As he was in the closeout of the Miami series in the fourth quarter where he dominated Illegal defense, the call. Marv, it's like the Bulls realize after game one that this Utah team is very good, and they've all come to play today, particularly Ron Harper, whose regular season, not that many minutes, but he's really stepped it up here in the postseason, shooting much better, pounding the boards, now pounding the ear of Jerry Sloan. Second uh, illegal defense, leading to the uh, technical foul. So the Bulls now lead 51-34. Going back to the second quarter, Utah has gone more than seven minutes without a field goal. Here's Malone. Terrific box out by Jordan. And Carl Malone just cannot find the range. Carl Malone is now three for 13. He has had a nightmare he is just flipping the ball around the rim even a couple that he has made he has flipped up there he's got to take it stronger to the rim stockton and he drew the foul john stockton went to the crossover on the baseline and he was blocked by hopper generally when you have a tough game you want to come right back and just be at such a, a level of range that nobody can stay with you but carl is letting that ball go too soon I think he's shooting on the way up almost every time and not taking advantage of the size and strength. There's really nobody on this team, if in the league, that can guard Carl Malone if he plays his game. Especially when he catches the ball two feet in the paint right <laughs> under the rim like that. That's usually a very easy field goal and possible three-point play for Carl. But I think Carl's got to mix it up a little. I said that the first time. He's got to go out around that top of the key area, take a couple jumpers, take a couple of drives. The foul called on Malone. That's his first. And what is with John Stockton? There was criticism, not taking enough shots, not being aggressive enough. The seven turnovers in, in game one and uh, thus far tonight. And certainly we have a long way to go, but one of five from the field. That's it. And most of those five shots taken in the very early going tried to establish an offense, but the long arms again is Luke Longley finds that left-handed hook. Luke giving a man. Well, along with Phil Jackson, a lot of static about Luke's shot selection with that left hand. So Chicago leads by 18. Here's Hornacek. Yes. So the Jazz finally able to find the range. Well, come playoff time, and especially in the finals, it's so hard to run set offense. The defense is so good, they take you out of it. Yes, Utah continues to try to run that set offense against sticky defense. Traveling. Traveling violation on Longley. You seem to enjoy the, uh, the travel by Luke. Well, Luke has come such a long way. And he has become a terrific player. Footwork still a little suspect at times, but he is able to deliver. Ouch. Utah just struggling. Offensive foul on Greg Foster. And Jerry Sloan very upset with his team right now as Greg Foster going to places where he normally doesn't work. He's usually out on the perimeter taking that jump shot. Well, the Jazz have gone eight and a half minutes without a field goal. Timeout is called. The Bulls are up by 16. 
Well, these aerial views of the city of Chicago being brought to you by Goodyear, Marv Albert with Matt Lucas, Bill Walton, Bob Rashad, Jim Gray. Working the uh, sideline, uh, a look at uh, the big four tonight. Michael Jordan has done the job, 20 points, 7 out of 14. Scotty Pippen quiet to this point. Carl Malone has been dormant, 3 of 13. And uh, John Stockton also quiet on uh, 1 of 5 from the field. Let's check in with the mob for a shot. Amon? All right, Marv, I was talking to Ron Harper the other day, and he said that, you know, Michael Jordan is not the only one who's always looking for challenges. He said his challenge this entire playoff series is stopping the top point guards in the league. In the first round, he had Rod Strickland, then Mookie Blaylock, then Tim Hardaway, and now John Stockton, and he has done admirably with all four of those guys, Marv. He's also done it at the offensive end here tonight. Scotty Pippen, not able to hit, but uh, it was punched down on a back tap. Good play by Longley. The beautiful thing about a guy in Harper's situation, when you play with a great, great player like a Jordan, a Malone, or a Bird, you just have to do your job like Luke Longley throwing down dunks. The big guys, the stars, Jordan and Pippen, they'll take care of the whole big picture. You just do the little things. That's what Harper has done throughout. Now lead 55-37. Illegal defense call for the third time against the Bulls. Well, Scotty Pittman in the low post, drawing the double team from Greg Foster, and not a wise double team, despite the fact that Pippen had a size advantage over Hortisek because nobody who expected the double team on the backside left that opening for Longley. Hornacek, just so short in that matchup, his, his arms, even though they were up, had no impact on Scotty's pass over to Thomas. Dennis takes a rest next to that Utah bench, certainly with a few words. I think Utah has to switch it up a little bit. The inside game is not working right now. they got to look for more pick and rolls. It was successful to some degree in the first half. I think there are something like uh, seven out of 13 successes on their pick and rolls, and especially when Utah runs it at the top of the floor. Tough for Chicago to defend that. And Tony Kukoc has made his return. Dennis Rodman hearing it from the crowd. Seven rebounds, four points for Rodman. Kukoc played nine minutes in the first half. The pass from Malone finding Foster, but he was blocked. Foster retrieves. Malone. Malone with the stuff off the setup from Foster. And all set up by that high pick and roll and some good passing. And Carl not worrying about that sore hand for that power dunk. Hopper. Yes. Bulls lead 57-40. But Jerry Sloan is just going nuts on the sideline over there. Blocking foul, tough call against Harper. I don't think anything this has been a numbers game. It's been a hustle game. Jim Gray has been reporting that Jerry Sloan has just been so disappointed with the team's hustle. Finally, Carl Malone gets free because of the quickness of Foster and the, and the continued motion. But right now, the, the Bulls just sharper, quicker in every aspect. And Utah struggling to find anything. Open opportunity for Kuko. Tony Kuko knocking down a three. And the Bulls lead by 20. It's their biggest lead of the night. Malone trying to squeeze his way through, and he threw the foul. Foul on Longley. That is his third. Chicago just advancing the ball. Utah very slow, getting back on defense, and Kukoc all day long to line that one up. Ron Harper looked over to the bench during that last transition and said he needed a breather. He's working very hard defensively, but he's also winding up with a lot of open shots. He's tired. On the replacement by Kerr, hit a couple of three-pointers earlier, and a blocking foul against Chicago. Foul on Kerr, that is his first, with 6.22 to go in this uh, third quarter. A reminder, Sunday, 4 o'clock Eastern, NBC Sports with a very special preview of the 97th U.S. Open, a look at Tiger Woods Drive to win Yet another major. No one has won the Masters in the U.S. Open in the same year since a fellow by the name of Jack Nicklaus back in 1972. 
plus a look at Congressional Country Club in the par 3 18th, a, a finishing hole that could have dramatic consequences. Plus much more as golf's greatest championship nears. The U.S. Open previous Sunday, 4 o'clock Eastern, right here on NBC. 60 to 42, Chicago. Jordan. Yes. That's a tough way to play the pick and roll for Utah. Brian Russell stepping behind Luke Longley to, to give Jordan a three, even though he's shooting just 12% coming in today from behind the line. He's got to be more aggressive and assertive defensively than Utah has been tonight. Stockton. And Jordan with the quick hand is able to save it. have been on every loose ball. Here's the isolation for Jordan. He played by Russell. Putting moves on. And hit him. Uh, when Michael gets the outside shot going, and he's starting to feel it right now. Russell. Ryan Russell. Have the foot on the line. It's a two-pointer. The ball's now lead 64-44. Russell, a two for nine. The other night in game one, he's two for seven here this evening. And the foul against the Jazz. It is a hold on Keith. Michael Jordan behind the pick and roll. Great screen by Luke Longley. No step out. I think Utah can probably double-team that because Luke Longley's not going to breach you from the free-throw line. And then Jordan patiently... And Brian Russell continues to flail away defensively rather than holding his ground. Bulls have hit their last five shots. Isley is back. Stockton will take a rest. Just under five left in the third. Yes. And he was fouled. All right, game one, Michael Jordan was 5 for 17 from the perimeter, meaning when he, before he raised up for that game-winning shot, just 4 for 16, and actually that was Brian Russell's probably best defensive play of the night. Kept Michael Jordan from driving, got a hand up on the shot. Michael just made a great play, but now Michael seems to have found the range from the perimeter, which will set up those kinds of drives to the hole. And Michael again hearing the, uh, the chant of MVP. He now has 25 points, along with 10 rebounds and five assists. Could be on his way to a triple-double. Michael Jordan has never had a triple-double in an NBA Finals game. It has been done 25 times by 13 players. What do you think Michael and Ahmad just sort of sit around and, and, and talk about the record he doesn't have, and then say, well, I'll go for that one today? He is uh, on pace. The only question will be in the assist column. And he has five. Four and a half left. Oh. Oh. The block and the foul. That's his fourth. Well, Adam Keith is a player for Utah who has fallen out of favor in, the, in Jerry Sloan's book. But he's the kind of guy so active around the basket. Knows how to get open underneath as he did there. Throws his body around, creates a lot of contact. Adam Keefe used sparingly, six foot nine, 240 pounder out of Stanford. Spent a couple of years with Atlanta. This is third season with Utah. Number one pick uh, by the Hawks, traded to Utah in the uh, deal involving Tyrone Corbin. Luke Longley, here's the applause. He sits down, leaves with six points. Adam Keith and Luke Longley, just another in a long series of redheads that have dominated this NBA for years. <laughs> Red Kerr, Dave Cowan. I'm trying to feel for another possibility. <laughs> That's enough. Brian Williams has come on, replacing uh, Luke Longley. Shot clock at two. Jordan. Kept alive by Pippen. Brian Russell too close. Didn't have a body on Scotty. He just reached up over and kept him alive. Jordan stripped by Isley. Jordan able to get back to it and uh, it leads to a jump ball. Well, Michael Jordan upset with the official on this particular play, but a nice defensive play by Shandon Anderson to get a lot of basketball to knock that loose. Obviously, Jordan didn't think so, but then Michael 
not worrying about it until he scrambles after the loose one. But isn't that what makes the Bulls so great, is that their best player, Michael Jordan, he's the one who's working the hardest on the defensive end, diving on the loose balls, digging it out, setting the tempo and the pace, inspiring his teammates. And the tip controlled by the Jacks. Mark, the Bulls are in complete control because they've dominated the board today. Unlike game one, now they're up 30 to 19 on the glass. A long foul, but a good play defensively by the Bulls, preventing the layup by Malone. Uh, actually, the Utah Jazz are not a good offensive rebounding team, uh, mainly because Carl Malone is shooting the ball so much, and many times it's a fadeaway shot or whatever, so he's not in position to rebound. So they don't get it from their big power forward and their best rebound. It comes from somebody, has to come from somebody else. Now the call on two coach. You hear the noisemakers of the apparently a local promotion giving out what will be called clackers, and uh, Malone has been uh, hearing it. You can see the the uh, free throw career of uh, Carl Malone. Remember, he came into the league shooting 48 percent, and then improved dramatically. He certainly had his ups and downs, and the last couple of years come playoff time. Malone is now five of eight at the line tonight, and the attempt for Carl are what's really important. He's going to make a, a good percentage. The last four road games these drives but starting on the right side hanging in the air clearing the defensive pressure and using the glass on the opposite side just beautifully well, he turns the corner and nobody closes him off everybody's trying to get in the air and block his shot but he just keeps going going until finally he passed all three guys and then reached out and dumped it in well bill the big reason is he's just flat out quicker than everybody else and they just can't get there in time Not bad for a guy who's uh, 34 years of age. He's pretty good. Good point. Utah now 19 of 28 at the line. That's 67%. Chicago leads by 20. Jordan. Yes. 30 for Jordan. 70, 48 for Chicago with just under three remaining in the third. And here's Russell, a three for Brian Russell. So the Bulls now lead 70 to 51 over a Utah team that went 64 and 18 during the regular season. A franchise record, 64. What a pass! Jordan for Williams. That's all clicking now. Either the triangle offense, the spread, every defensive move Utah is making. Chicago is countering for an easy basket. You know, you look back toward the end of the regular season for the Bulls, a season that saw them win 69 games. They, they had some uneven moments, certainly not impressive through a good portion of the playoffs. Uh, they have done it all here tonight. This easily their best performance. Keep off the steal of Brian Anderson. And the Bulls now lead 72 to 53. And finally, a good play for the Utah Jazz. The athleticism of Shannon Anderson so critical. But when he and, and Brian Russell and Adam Keith are not getting it done off the bench, it's very difficult because tonight, Carl Malone and John Stockton have not had it, but the passing for Chicago, just magnificent, a thing of beauty to watch. And Russell against Chicago. That stopped the uh, last three. Attempt by Utah, foul committed by Kuko. Oh, Michael Jordan working on Shannon Anderson, taking him right, taking him left, just getting up in the air so quickly and getting a good look at the rim. And then when he draws the double team, knows exactly where his teammates are. Brian Williams knifing to the basket for the easy dunk. A minute 36 to go in the third. The Bulls with a commanding lead.
A Michael Jordan consistently brilliant as this game has worn on. Coming out very sharp from the beginning and now has found his jump shot. And that's trouble for Utah. Turns the corner and reverses beautifully. And the nifty pass to Brian Williams. And you look back at NBA history, the all-time leading scorer in NBA Finals play, Rick Barry, as you saw, followed by Michael Jordan, Jerry West, just over 30 a game, Bob Pettit, 28 and change, Hakeem Olajuwon at 27 and a half uh, per game. So Michael Jordan is number two behind Rick Barron. Rick only playing in, uh, only, Rick played in two finals, 1967, 1975. Huge numbers for Barry. That's the kind of performance that Carl Malone needs to come up with because this offense has, has completely disintegrated for the Utah Jazz. 72-54, Chicago, a minute 36 left in this third quarter. Let's check in with Jim Gray. All right, Marv, during that timeout, Jerry Sloan told his guys, at least now you're not playing with any fear. You're playing with some reckless abandon. You guys that can live with your effort now, at least you're competing. Not too dissimilar to a speech that he gave against the Rockets in game six when he said, hey, guys, they were down by 12. Go out and give it your best effort. Similar type of thing, and they came back and won. Marv? All right, Jim, you buy that, Bill? Are they still playing with the fear? Or they don't seem to be as sharp as they have been. This is the, I think, by far the poorest team the Jazz have played. Carl Malone now has 17, and it's Chicago with a 72-57 lead with a minute remaining in the third quarter. Williams, Ryan Williams for the second field goal. He has four. It has to be particularly disappointing for Jerry Sloan, one of the fiercest defensive players, and his guys are just getting posted up one feet, one foot from the hoop and turning the ball over carelessly. But this, this, excuse me, Ryan, this is the best the Chicago ball movement has been that I've seen throughout the playoffs, despite the fact that Michael Jordan has taken a lot of it on himself. Everybody seems to be at least involved in touching the basketball. They've mixed their offense up beautifully. And a reach-in foul is called. Now, turnover is a major problem for Utah the other night in game one. It has not uh, been a problem tonight. That was uh, just number nine of... A moment ago, Scotty Pippen to the line with 25 seconds left in the third. Well, Sunday at 5 o'clock Eastern, Ahmad Rashad will host NBA at the finals, taking a look at three pioneers of the WNBA and the obstacles that they have faced on their journey to playing professional women's basketball. This special will also go behind the scenes to find the personal subplots that will make this year's NBA finals so compelling captures a, a side of these championships that most fans never see. It's all here Sunday, 5 o'clock Eastern on NBC. We're down to 15 seconds remaining in the third. And the Bulls have a 76-57 lead. The Jazz spreading out the floor. Nicely putting moves on curve and hitting. seconds of the quarter. Brian Williams looking for the open receiver and Kerr rammed by Isley. And Jerry Sloan just flips the ball up in the air. Everything that could possibly go wrong has for the Utah Jazz. Isley, the only player who can say that, hey, I've really done anything out there tonight. Played uh, extremely well in relief of John Stockton, but now he puts Steve Kerr, just a phenomenal shooter at the line. Two and six tenths seconds remaining in the third quarter. Kerr at the line for the uh, first time. One of the better free throw shooters in the NBA over the years. <laughs> now Judd Bushler reports back, replacing Scotty Pippen. 77-59 Chicago. The Bulls hoping to take a 2-0 lead to game three Friday night in Salt Lake City. 9 o'clock Eastern time here on NBC. Game four Sunday in Utah at 7.30 Eastern time. And Malone flips it. 
Kerr on the intercept. Kerr fires. And that's the end of the third quarter. It's the Bulls 78 and the Jazz 59. The Bulls shoot 11 of 16 from the field in the third. We'll be back here in Chicago after these messages from your local station. Back in Chicago, you can see the uh, the numbers during the course of the regular season. Fewest points for Utah after three quarters against Detroit. Back in January, 55 points tonight, only 59. 78-59, Chicago as this fourth quarter gets underway. Marv, you see the Utah offense picking up with 28 points, but the defense absolutely porous, giving up 31. Antoine Carr is back, as is John Stockton. Carr below sitting down here at the start of the fourth quarter. Bad pass saved by Williams. Once again, Utah trying to run set offense, the bumping and grinding on the screens, trying to get position, and the tough, aggressive defense of Chicago forcing a turnover. Nice pass. Adam Keith rebounding the miss by Brian Williams. Any man for Chicago is flashing to the post as Stockton can't find the range on the pull-up three. But any man for Chicago that's jumped into the lane, Mark, they just get whatever they want at the one-foot range. John Stockton is now one of seven from the field. Hopper and Jordan with Bushler, Kukoc, and Williams. Very nice and pass. And here comes Stockton. Russell for three. Rebounded by Kuko. Well, we talked earlier about the defensive strengths of the Bulls backcourt with the long arms. Those long arms also help in the passing. They're able to pass over the top of the shorter Utah players. Russell trying to close that baseline, but Jordan, with a quick move, drew the foul. Uh, keep a, your eye on the Tony Kukoc on the left part of your screen. Everything breaks down. The ball hit Michael Jordan's hands with the shot clock winding down. But Kukoc makes a nice move across the lane to get that opening. Can't finish the shot, however. Michael Jordan leading Chicago with 30 points. Utah couldn't have played that play any worse than they did. Another assist for Jordan. That is number seven. He is three assists away from his first ever triple-double in the NBA Finals. And the Bulls now lead 80-59. Defense. Stockton for three. Now that's one of the most fluid plays that the Jazz have run in quite some time. It's just a straight post up, a couple of cutters go through, made the defense react, and then you get an open shot. Stockton flips it down a car. Stripped by Harper. Oh, terrific play by Bristol. What balance, what presence. The strip by Hopper and Bush were able to come up with that loose ball. Hopper for three. Air ball. He thought that he was fouled. And now Jordan is fouled by Anderson. A terrific pass. A look up by John Stockton hitting the streaking Antoine Carr who just cannot get to finish the play. It's knocked loose by Harper, and then he gets, uh, or I should say, Carr gets knocked out of the play, and Bushler goes the other way. Lakers won that game, but lost the series four games to three. In recognition of this classic moment, the Miller Brewing Company will donate $1,000 to the Thurgood Marshall Scholarship Fund. Elgin Ballas, 61 points, the all-time leader, followed by that man, Michael Jordan, who had a 55-point uh, game. And uh, look at the Jordan rundown tonight. 30 points, 11 rebounds, 7 assists. That's what makes Michael Jordan so special. He, he is not by any stretch of the imagination a one-dimensional player. Maybe the best rebounder in the game, maybe the best defensive player in the game, maybe the best passer, maybe the best dribbler, triple doubles, and active playoff leaders, Michael Jordan trailing Scottie Pippen. 
but has never done it in the NBA Finals, and he is three assists away. 81-62, Chicago. Coming up on nine minutes left in the fourth quarter. Quarter set, having difficulty with Jordan. And then puts it to Malone. And the foul is called on Chicago. Holding foul. It is on Brian Williams. That is number five. The poor shooting continues for the Jazz. Stockton, just one basket in each half. Carl Malone, just two baskets in the second half. One of the things that makes it so difficult, though, for the Jazz to get the ball inside the Carmel, and they're fronting him, Chicago is, and then they're pressuring the ball so well, and they're so quick on the weak side. Hello. Whoa. Watch your face. <laughs> Firing a brick. Now, for those of you who would like to continue with the NBA Finals, we will have a post-game special on CNBC that'll be right after the game. The entire cast will recount the game with highlights and live press conference interviews and guests as we look back at game two here in Chicago. The NBA Finals post-game special on CNBC immediately following the game. So stay with us. We have 8.45 left in the fourth quarter. Uh, it was such an important factor for Chicago coming into this series to try and control John Stockton. Very difficult to do. They've done it so far in these first two games. Hornacek getting the pass to the cutting Keith. And the Bulls now lead 81-64. loss of the season during the course of a regular season suffered by Utah on two occasions beat by 14 once by the LA Clippers once by the Toronto Raptors offer throwing a brick and here's Hornacek and a give and go that is broken up now during the playoffs Utah did lose by 20 to the Los Angeles Lakers, so that is their overall worst defeat. Well, in the, in the playoffs, Utah averaging just 82 points a game on the road, so they've had their problems there, and they're averaging just over a, a little over 100 at home. It's a different team because they run more, they, the crowd gets behind them. They're a more active team, obviously, the Delta Center. Crowd wants to travel, and now the foul is called. It is on Hornacek. The Delta Center in Salt Lake City, such a difficult place to play. You look at the best home record in the regular season this year, Chicago at the top, Utah right there. In the postseason, though, the Jazz undefeated. The Bulls with the one loss to Atlanta. Marv, you're right. That crowd will be so fired up in Utah. One of the great crowds in the uh, NBA also has that, that pit feeling. They're right on top of you. Longley getting it to Pippen to try to save it. And uh, knocked out of bounds. Last touch by Anderson. And in Utah, in Salt Lake City, there is a slight altitude factor. Michael Jordan was telling Gene Siskel before the game, because Gene asked him, what do, you, what do you think about it? He said, it usually bothers us the first time we go in there, but that's the only time they've ever gone in, is one time. So we'll see what happens on Friday. Say attitude or altitude? <laughs> altitude. Oh, altitude. Altitude. Basket won't count. Foul on Anderson. And there is uh, Gene Sisko. Always a uh, a source of uh, Matt Gukas prior in the games. Matt looking for movie passes. Right. I'll buy big guy. Foul is called on Anderson. This is game two of the best of seven. NBA Finals Series, game one Sunday night, won by Chicago, 84-82 on that dramatic jump shot by that man, Michael Jordan. Friday night, Salt Lake City, game three, nine o'clock Eastern time, right here on NBC. A look at the rest of the schedule, game three on Friday, game four on Sunday. Marv, I really thought the Jazz would play a lot better ball game than they did tonight. They just came out flat. Carl missed some easy shots early. They never got into it. 
when when Chicago did struggle, the Jazz couldn't capitalize, and the shooting woes continue. Yes, this has to be awfully disappointing, along with, with the tip, because you talked to the coaches after the first game, and they, they were not obviously you don't like to lose on a last-second shot, but they were not disgusted because they felt they were correctable uh, things they could adjust. Uh, even talking about the turnovers, they felt uh, there was a lot of fault. Uh, they can certainly make adjustments, but they have not. Uh, the Bulls came out fast, and, and it's just been a, a, a very poor game for Utah here tonight. And as Jim Gray reported at the beginning that, that this Utah team has responded magnificently to adversity all year long. They're just going to have to totally regroup and come out with a rededicated focus. Jordan Harper on the break. And Harper goes all the way. So the Bulls lead it. 87 66. But a loss is a loss. I mean, there are no trends. Every game is different. Everything. Look at Scotty Pippen tonight. He's, he's out there. He's playing. Nowhere near the, the tremendous performance he put on the game. What it wasn't needed because Michael Jordan is having a gem. And every game is different. You, you take the win, you take the loss, you move on, you prepare for that next game. Hornacek fires one up. Man hits. Jeff Hornacek with a with a two-pointer. And the look on Bushler's face, it was all up over Hornacek and Bushler said, what do I have to do to make this guy miss here? Chicago needs a timeout. And the timeout is taken with 5.51 remaining in the fourth. Back in Chicago, these aerial views of the Windy City being brought to you by Goodyear. It's been all Chicago. 5.51 remaining, 87-68 the score. One-time head coach, one-time standout player for the Chicago Bulls. Gary Sloan has had a very long evening. Gary played 11 NBA seasons, 10 as a member of the Chicago Bulls. This vintage footage of uh, Jerry Sloan, known as a, a fierce competitor, two-time All-Star, uh, six-time All-Defensive Team selection, and uh, at times it might be said he would let his emotions run over the edge. <laughs> One-time head coach of the Bulls, he coached Chicago back in 80, 81, 82. From McLeansboro, Illinois, population of 2,700. his ninth season overall as head coach of the Jazz. That is the longest active tenure with one team, and uh, he's done a, a terrific job. Could certainly uh, put together a strong argument for Jerry Sloan as NBA uh, Coach of the Year this season among many uh, legitimate candidates. Well, they win 50 games plus every year. This was a franchise record year. They conduct themselves on and off the court perfectly. They play a beautiful style of basketball. And every year, the team seems to get better and better, adding more pieces to the puzzle. I was fortunate enough to play with Jerry Sloan for three years here in Chicago. A great teammate, one of the best help defenders that I ever played with. And he certainly had to help me quite a bit. Outstanding rebounder, huge hand, big hand, anything around the basket, anything he could get his hands. He wasn't a great leaper, but anything he got his hand on, he got it. I would imagine those practice sessions going against Jerry would be most intriguing on your part. <laughs> well, when he was your teammate, he was with you all the way. He played hard in practice, but you had to play against him. That, in, in the other teams, very difficult. And Michael Jordan called for the uh, foul, got a piece of uh, Hornacek. That is uh, his first. And three shots coming up for Hornacek. Michael Jordan playing the defense there, just a, a little bit of a reach, trying to get out of the break, <laughs> calling for the foul. I did have the privilege of playing against Jerry Stone. I still have scars, physical but mostly emotional. <laughs> Jerry Sloan took over in Utah, 17 games into the 88-89 season, taking over from uh, Frank Layden, one of only two Chicago Bulls to have his uh, uniform number retired uh, here in Chicago. The other is Bob Love. Out of 520 remaining in the fourth quarter. And the Bulls lead 89-70. The Jazz 
never got into it. It was 6-0 at the start. It was 8-1. Now you think, hey, it's early. It doesn't matter, but they just could not get going. Chicago leading all the way. Chicago went through a drought period and then snapped out of it. Utah went through several periods where they were not able to score. Never did snap out. And Utah has been such a sharp team from the outset in virtually every game this this playoff run for them. Now the Jazz sticking with their regulars, trying to find that rhythm. Interesting to see how long Sloan stays with these guys. Two stars have not been able to do it. Carmelo again coming up short. John Stockton has not played well. Everything on Carl at the front of the rim. Well, he has developed a habit, and it's become his shot where he doesn't really turn and square up and face the basket. It's kind of a half turn. He's had some success with it. It has looked terrible so far in these first two games. Malone is now 6 of 20, 19 points. Stockton with 12 points, 6 assists. That's it. And a foul is called. Foul on the Jazz. Foul on Malone. That's his second. And Jordan to the line. The Jazz scoring tonight, just atrocious. One of the top scoring teams in the regular season. On the road, it has not uh, been very successful. And Jerry Sloan talking about, we got to run harder, we got to put more points on the board. It's just not happening. And uh, Utah, very good road team during the regular season at 26 and, and 15. Matt, you were talking earlier about the Carmelo shot and the, and, and the footwork. But great defensive players, great defensive teams like Jordan and the Bulls, they work nonstop on making other players use bad footwork. That's something that they, the Bulls have done as they continue to pick apart. Jordan getting closer and closer to that triple-double. That's assist number nine. He is one assist away from a triple-double. His first in NBA Finals play, Anderson able to hit. Anderson with only his second field goal. 91-76, 335 remaining in the fourth. Chicago Bulls on their way to taking a 2-0 lead. Assist number 10. <laughs> Scotty, uh, Michael's telling Pippen, hey, will you please make a layup? Russell. And the ball's now laid 91, 79. The only question is, will Michael Jordan be able to get his triple double? That time he's fouled. Well, Scotty just handed the ball off to Michael Jordan and ran by and said, don't worry, I'll make the next one. Try it again. This was a perfect pass, and for some reason, Scotty Pippen just squeezed it out of there. <laughs> He's back there saying, hey, you guard him. I got this guy. He's not worried about it. But the, the Bulls are, are, are probably the best team in basketball in terms of spreading the floor and making teams chase them once they've got this lead. And then they just pick you apart with those big guards passing over the top to, to big men flashing at the hoop. Jordan Supreme tonight. 37 for Jordan. And the Bulls lead 93. 79 with three minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. Stockton. This is all cosmetic. When you look at the box score tomorrow, you'll see John Stockton with 14 points, but not able to do it in the early going. Jordan lost the dribble. And uh, that will be a jump ball alone. And, and Hoffer will go on the toss. Timeout has been called with 2.42 remaining in this fourth quarter. Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen playing two-man basketball here. <laughs> that missed assist, Michael looking over at him and said, what is wrong? <laughs> I can't believe that. Well, Michael Jordan with 37 points. Chicago up 93-81. 11 of 20 from the field for uh, Michael Jordan. Scotty Pippen with uh, 10 points. Carmelo has not done it. Only 
6 of 20 shooting. John Stockton, 4 of 12. And Michael Jordan, one of his best performances in the NBA Finals. Overall best, that 55-point game back in June of 93 against Phoenix. And he's gunning for a triple-double, trying to be, become only the 14th player in NBA Finals history to collect a, a, a triple-double. The last to do it, Charles Barkley of the uh, Phoenix Suns against the uh, Chicago Bulls back in uh, 1993. Magic Johnson has done it eight times. Bob Cousy twice. Meanwhile, Utah has, has closed the gap. Chicago has led by as many as 22 points, but you don't really have a feeling that they're in this ball game, although there are 234 remaining, which is the same situation that the Jazz were in, down 12 with just a little over two minutes to go, and they struck back and wiped out the Houston Rockets. Still, but as you say, Mark, it, the Jazz aren't playing that way. Right, has Pippen. Rebounded by Malone. This again would have been an opportunity for a 10 assist and a triple double. Coming up on two minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. Malone had it knocked away. And a foul. This is the closest since Chicago led 37 to 29. That foul was called on Jordan. Very strong move to the hoop by Carl Malone. One of the toughest of the night. Well, Malone is now 8 of 11 at the line. And you can see a look of frustration on the face of Michael Jordan right now. He's looking down at the bench, looking at uh, what, what Phil Jackson wants to call. And whether or not it's the triple-double or he's very unhappy with the way his ball club is finishing up, it's a little hard to tell, but he's not happy. But Malone misses on the second. So the Bulls lead by 11 with just under two minutes remaining in the fourth. Very small lineup here for Chicago. Shot clock at six. Rodman's pass picked off. A lazy pass thrown. And here comes Stockton. Morrison for three. And the Jazz very much alive. They are within eight points with a minute and a half to go. Need to play very smart here for the Jazz. Force fadeaways, force casual plays by the Bulls. Here's Pippen. He thought he was fouled. No call. And last touch by Utah. It will be Chicago ball with a minute 16 remaining. Utah has outscored Chicago 26-15 in the fourth quarter. Again, they double up on Jordan. And a foul. The Jazz over the uh, limits so of Jordan to the line. Hornacek is fouled out. Well, that takes another offensive player away from Utah and a three-point threat. And if all of this is happening to Chicago, in order to get Michael Jordan a triple double, it's absolutely ridiculous. He play in the finals. He just gets the win. I think the Bulls would be much better served if they took care of this ballgame and got Michael Jordan and Scotty Pippen on the bench, get them some rest, rather than worrying about triple doubles, if, in fact, that's what they're doing. Getting him on the bench, this game's still in doubt. No, I'm saying as the game was winding down, just take care of the game and not worry about statistics. Michael Jordan, 14 of 19 at the line. Jeff Pornasek fouled out, played 31 minutes, scored 19 points. 1-11 remaining. And Chicago leads by nine. That last foul drawn by Michael Jordan as Harper checks back in for defensive purposes. Been a master all night. But when you double team Jordan, you can't let him step through and split that double team. You gotta make him spin out of it. So Michael Jordan hits one of two. 105. Remaining in the fourth quarter. Bulls 94 and the Jazz 85. Bushler broke it up. Bushler with the steal. Yeah. 
Down to 50 seconds. Utah is over the limit. Shot clock at seven. Pippen for three. Plus to three. Jordan with the steal. So back-to-back -back turnovers by Stockton. Down to 25 seconds. And Jordan running it down. Both do have timeouts remaining, as did Utah. A poor shooting fourth quarter by Chicago, 4 of 17. Dennis Rodman. And the Bulls now lead 97-85. That was a three for Rodman. Final seconds. The Chicago Bulls have defeated the Utah Jazz 97 the Bulls had the big lead most of the way. They led by as many as 22. Michael Jordan falls and assists shy of a triple-double. But Michael Jordan with another magnificent performance. 38 points, 13 rebounds, and 9 assists. And he put them on for shot. All right, thanks, Mark. Michael, were you aware that how close you were to a triple-double during the last part of that game? Yeah, I was aware. Pippen made me, made me aware when he missed that. <laughs> but that's okay. We got to win. That's all that matters. What was the difference in game one and game two? It seemed like you guys came out very much prepared, and they really, were you disappointed in the effort that they had? Well, we came out on the, on the heels of what we did last game, and we were ready to take any adjustments that they made. They really didn't make the adjustments uh, that we anticipated, so we basically stayed in the same focus that we did in the first game and you know right out from the beginning right to the end of the game we just maintained our defensive pressure operated moved the ball around got some good shots you told me earlier a couple weeks ago that was defense that wins championships and you guys showed that tonight yeah we did tonight but we know we're going into utah and they play well at home the crowd's gonna be real loud these are countrymen pros we talk about Stockton and Malone they're gonna be ready to play all right Michael congratulations on a great game we will see you on Friday thank you all right let's go over to Jim Gray who's... oh let's go back to Marv Albert all right thanks Ahmad as uh, Michael points out Salt Lake City always a difficult place to play 2-0 is the tally in this series in favor of Chicago 97-85 the final we'll be right back <laughs> 